won multiple awards for news reporting for television, uh, Emmys, and of course was a longtime talk show host, a top rated talk show host uh, there in Missouri. And now for the last 11 years or so, he has been the main uh, weeknight host of Coast to Coast AM, one of the highest rated radio broadcasts in the world. And he's a good friend of mine, and he's had a lot of courage to take uh, that show 11 years ago. There was not a lot of this information out there uh, in the media. I'd say Art Bell covered it maybe, you know, kind of New World Order, constitutional, uh, libertarian issues 10% of the time, which I was very thankful for and was a riveting host. George Norrie, I'd say, does it about half the time. And then he gets into the other, you know, uh, fun topics and things that get people thinking as well. Uh, and that's why whenever I can catch it, I certainly I like to tune in to George Norrie, but also all the other great hosts. Uh, there with coast to coast am dot com like John B Wells uh, and so many others coast to coast am dot com and uh, he's on with us for the rest of the hour here today. I wanted to get George on to get his take on the NSA spying, the IRS persecution of pro lifers, libertarians, conservatives, uh, the Snowden situation, uh, the mysterious explosion death uh, last Tuesday. Now a week ago today of Michael Hastings, one of the editors at Rolling Stone. Now, uh, Richard Clark says Hastings' accident consistent with a car cyber attack. He said intelligence agencies know how to remotely seize control of a car. Yeah, that particular Mercedes, the computer takes over when it says you're not driving good. They're going to make us have robot-driven cars, folks. That's the plan. Just like I told you 10 years ago, they'll make you take pills that report back wirelessly that you're taking them properly. That's Wall Street Journal. Forget to take your meds. These pills will tell your doctor. And if you're overtaking them, it'll tell your doctor. Everything I've talked about, everything George has talked about for, I don't know, 16, 17 years on radio, 11 years on Coast to Coast AM, it's now out in the open. So the question is, we've reached that critical crossroads where it's all coming out now that, okay, hydrofluorosilicic acid, major Harvard studies, does lower IQ 20 points on average, does sevenfold increase in bone cancer. Why are they adding more of it than ever? Okay, they are putting cancer viruses in vaccines. Why? Okay, the polio vaccine is sterilizing people in mass. Why? Uh, okay, uh, Bill Gates says he wants to reduce world population. Why is he pushing to make us eat GMO in studies that reduces fertility? I mean, it's just all coming out. Everything. And I don't mind becoming passe, but I'm not becoming passe. Instead, I am having, and George, I know, is being criticized as well. But Man Cow is being criticized because he covers some of these issues. And he's now got a big History Channel show coming out. George has got a big popular TV show. Now it's like they're bad because they don't like the NSA spying on them. And they're bad because they don't like FEMA camps being built. And they're bad because, because they don't you know, want to fund Al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria. So it's either do we reverse the pendulum from tyranny back to liberty, or is it like what happened in so many other countries? We go into the dark night, the dark winter of just, okay, we now are under a tyranny. Now they arrest journalists that talk to whistleblowers. Because, folks, George has talked to a lot of whistleblowers. I've talked to a lot of whistleblowers. I mean, now I sit here and go, wow, I really talked to an NSA person the other day in my office. Or who I've you no know, worked for Air Force Intelligence and the NSA. And he said, I was told, it's Raymond Teague, he's going to come in next week. I was told I'll be killed. This is in front of three of my reporters if I ever talk about this. Raymond Teague, folks, was on the Apollo mission on the front line as one of the main ground commanders of it. He got a presidential uh, freedom award. Was it from Ronald Reagan? I mean, you could see him on, on any show about Apollo. You see Raymond Teague there. It was one of the main guys in mission control. Before that, he worked for Air Force Intelligence. And then after that, he worked for government agencies and classified stuff. And he wouldn't tell me anything really classified, but he was shaking when he said this. He said, I was told at each graduation that I'd be killed. All of us were told, you will be killed if you talk about this. I mean, and, and, and they've now got Meet the Press saying arrest Greenwald of the Guardian, an American, because he talked to Edward Snowden. This is the chilling effect. No one ever got arrested for reporting criminal spying. It's illegal what goes on. And Raymond also told us, I'm going to go to George Norrie. Raymond also told us that, oh, yeah, they saw the, 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 the intelligence, the spying going on. And then, yeah, of course, the government was bringing in the narcotics. That's now public knowledge. It, it, so, 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 George, you get where I'm going with this. What I want to ask you is, 
Do you agree with me or, or what's your take on it? Have we reached the crossroads, the jump point, the event horizon here, I think really in just the next few years, the quickening where it's all out in the open and humanity has that choice. And we either wake up to how much trouble we're in and have courage to push the envelope and talk about this as you did, I uh, really is a trailblazer and I'm not kissing your hind end, it's true. Uh, we need other people to stand up like you did, George, and lead the way, or I think we're doomed, George Norrie. Well, Alex, there's, there's no question. You know, what you've been doing, what we've been doing on coast to coast, we've been trailblazers trying to wake up the American people that what's happening is just not right. It's just not normal. And so other people, insiders like the Edward Snowdens and the Michael Hastings, these are people who said, you know what, we think enough is enough too. And so they, working within that arena, decided to take matters in their own hands to do what they do. Um, I don't know what's happening, Alex. I don't know why this seems to be moving along so quickly. But ever since 9-11, it has just been roaring like a train out of control. And we can see it in everything that's happening today, whether it's we want to control your guns, we want to know what you're doing on the Internet, we want to know who you're sending text messages to. It's just totally out of control. And, I mean, they're, they're even putting in little chips in pills so the good doctor can decide if you're taking your medication. What business is it, uh, you know, him. That wirelessly transmits like you're a prisoner. Well, well, they use pharmacia to get us addicted, and then they use that to now make us wireless prisoners with microchips in our intestines, reporting back through the wireless internet. I mean, this is this this is the technocratic takeover, George. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it, and it and it just as they said is just rolling along at a pace that is totally uncontrollable. I think something else is going on here, Alex. And that they feel as if they're out of time. They've got to do this quickly. They've been doing this. So the last couple of years, you and I have felt them speed this up. Ever since that day where Zygmunt Brzezinski was talking to uh, the CF uh, Council of Foreign Relations people, saying they're aware, meaning us people, we're aware of what they plan to do, and we need to speed things up. Wow, that's chilling, because then he wrote a book that came out last year, uh, and 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 said, I actually went and bought the book. He said, it's cheaper now to kill a million people than to just convince them with propaganda. The establishment, I agree with you, is panicking. So what do we do, George? Well, we keep doing what we're doing because you can see what's happening worldwide. Look at the uprising in Brazil. Look at what's happening in Turkey. Look what's happened in the Middle East. People are beginning to say enough is enough. This isn't just the haves and the have-nots. This is people, people who are just fed up with being controlled, and they're fighting back. Now, through this entire thing, I find it so ironic where Edward Snowden, who I don't believe is a traitor, but I do believe that he is a hero for letting us know what was going on. It's bizarre that a communist nation like Russia would hide him and hold him. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that to me, is the most baffling of this entire thing. I mean, here we have a guy who releases information on the NSA to protect Americans, to protect our rights and our freedom, and he's being protected by a country that oppresses freedom worse than anybody. It, it, it is bizarre. Man, George, I know you've got children, and uh, I believe even some grandchildren, don't you? Yes, I have six grandchildren. And people that haven't had children yet, I don't think they understand what clicks in your brain chemically where you really start caring about the future. And obviously your children and grandchildren are 100 times more than you care about yourself. I just can't get how the elite with their kids uh, don't want a better world. Because there's no way they're going to get away with all this and, and not have blowback, George. No, there's no way they're going to get away with it. I mean, they just, they just can't. And, and I think one of the reasons, Alex, that they're speeding things up in every direction, is that they know we've had enough. And, uh, you know, everything that they had planned is falling apart, and I think that bothers them, too. You know, the, the plans for the FEMA camps, the, uh, the control. I mean, it's being whittled away. I mean, look at that crazy rule about taking knives on planes. I was not in favor of that. Come on. But 
the American public got so outraged about it, the flight attendants got so outraged about it, even some of the TSA people got outraged about it, they dropped it. And I think that's what's starting to happen now. People are starting to voice themselves, saying, this is ludicrous, this is crazy. That's right, there's seven and a half billion of us, and if we all start just doing little things, it'll move mountains. If we stop complying and start having our voice heard and start talking to the enforcers and saying, is this really the world you want? It is, uh, it, it, it is something that we will see, my prediction, in the next five years, such a dramatic change where we will be the winners. You won't believe it. George Norris, our guest, and I... Um Hope that he's right. Uh, I, I know this. We're going to govern what happens in the future. George, I've got a bunch of questions for you on the economy, uh, on the IRS uh, intimidation, new breaking Benghazi news. I want to ask you about that, but we're about to go to break. We're going to find out when we come back, though, what you want to talk about. I always love the wild card of uh, what's front and center on George Norrie's radar. So we'll speak to him. And also, he's coming to Canada this weekend. Uh, to speak and he's going to have a surprise guest so we'll uh, tell you about that coming up as well stay with us now you can watch alex jones live at infowars.com forward slash show you'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for prison planet tv you can also browse the network the infowars nightly news and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place you can watch the alex jones radio show live as it happened so check it out infowars.com forward slash show i want to play a clip for george nori host of coast to coast am that's joining us as a guest right now and then get his take on it uh, this is David Gregory on Meet the Press to Glenn Greenwald, who's a hero reporter. In the past, he would just be doing his job, but now it's, it's heroic uh, when you've had so many reporters charged and arrested um, now, along with whistleblowers, for exposing corruption. If you expose a government murder now and whistleblow, you go to jail. And there's a huge chilling effect going on. So Snowden exposes illegal spying. It's already known it's going on. He just points out what everybody already knows. Uh, you have the CIA director last year bragging about how your dishwasher is watching you. But he blows the whistle from the inside, so they want to throw him in jail. And they, of course, have indicted him and are following him around. And, and here was Gregory, a member of the press, not even really a member of the press, like a wolf saying you ought to be arrested for a reporter now talking to the whistleblower Unbelievable. This has never before happened in modern American history. Here it is. I want George's take on it. Um, to the extent that you have aided and abetted Snowden, even in his current movements, why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? I think it's pretty extraordinary that anybody who would call themselves a journalist would publicly muse about whether or not other journalists should be charged with felonies. The assumption in your question, David, is completely without evidence, the idea that I've aided and abetted him in any way. The scandal that arose in Washington before our stories began was about the fact that the Obama administration is trying to criminalize investigative journalism by going through the, the emails and phone records of AP reporters, accusing oh, a Fox News journalist. Of George, uh, you have interviewed viewed countless whistleblowers like you broke e howard hunt's son who as a journalist brought forward the tapes and everything of his father uh admitting that he'd been involved in killing kennedy in dallas 50 years ago that violates so-called national security i mean i guess should you be arrested i uh, i interviewed him after, should, uh, should i be arrested i was one of the last reporters to talk to jimmy hoffa alex back in 1975 wow. Uh, I got him on one of my TV shows in Detroit, and then I was walking him to his car. And, you know, he was telling me that he had planned to get back into the Union. He wanted his presidency back, even though the agreement with Nixon was that he wouldn't run for uh, office anymore um, for his parole. And, uh, you know, I kind of looked at him, and I'm saying to myself, this is a guy who was involved with the mob, who financed through the Teamsters Union pension fund Vegas, and now he wants to go straight. They're going to get this guy. And sure enough, a month or two later, he was gone. And, you know, the bottom line is is that we as reporters have got to become sacrosanct from 
anything else. I mean, we're not breaking laws when we're investigating, talking, and getting information. I mean, we used to have a privilege a long time ago where, you know, if law enforcement came to us and said, you know, who's the source of your story? We didn't have to tell them that. Now it's almost as if, you know, you must tell us who your sources are or you're going to jail. But it doesn't matter because we've been listening in on your phone calls and your emails anyway. So we've got that information. Uh, it, it's, a, it's appalling. And I think what, uh, what happened on Meet the Press was just as ridiculous. David Gregory trying to pretend that, you know, he's Mr. Holier Than Now, uh, attacking another journalist who was merely the conduit for the story. He didn't do it. He didn't release the documents. He reported on it for the American people and for the world. And, and to accuse him of aiding and abetting it is absolutely ridiculous. That's right. Well, you've won three, uh, three, Emmys. three Emmys for news reporting. So, I mean, you, you have been the consummate TV investigative journalist on record. And so here you are as a journalist. Did you ever think you'd see America get to the point where there's an open war on the press, on the Tea Party, uh, on libertarian groups, on pro-lifers, where the IRS is telling Christians they can't pray? I mean, that, that's in the news. This, this is authoritarianism. We woke up, it's here, and are, are we going to lay down to it is the question. I agree with Hastings. It's time for the press to line up and go against this corrupt system. Absolutely. But then what happens? Look, we don't know what happened to Michael Hastings. Was he speeding along? Did he, did he get into an accident? Maybe, maybe, but it sure is coincidental, and I don't believe in coincidences, that here's a guy who was telling his friends, you know, you may be contacted by the FBI, who felt that he was being investigated by the FBI, who said, I've got a major story, and some people think it had to do with drones and surveillance. And all of a sudden, the guy dies. I mean, come on. Two hours after, he says, I'm going off the radar. Absolutely. What does well, he, he went off the radar, didn't he? Yeah, he, he sure. His engine went off the radar, too. 60 yards down the street. George Norrie's our guest. Long segment coming up. We'll get uh, into all of the key news and Hastings straight ahead. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. 
No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original, real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Monday through Friday, folks, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We have InfoWars Nightly News every evening, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, we're finishing up the new studio. We're getting our reporters in place and up to speed. Great crew. I'm preparing to put the show out on cable systems and satellite. All of this is because of your subscribing to PrisonPlanet.tv. If you haven't subscribed, it is $5.95 a month. One membership can be logged on to simultaneously by 11 people, you and 10 other people. So create a username and passcode, it takes about a minute, that is unique to prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com, that'll take you there as well, and then share it with, I think you could do it with 20 or 30 friends and family, because most of them won't tune in every night when the show comes on at 7, uh, or go to the archive simultaneously. And if you try to log in and you can't, that means 11 people actually used it, thank God, Go buy another membership for yourself. I mean, you don't just buy a gift membership and then one person can use it. You get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership and 11 people can simultaneously use it and see the nightly news, the archives of all the shows in high def, uh, all of my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, so many films that we've made, films we've been authorized to post. We're going to premiere state of mind that I'm in that explodes the mind control agenda. And, and, I, and I don't just mean MK Ultra type stuff, but the ambient globalist programming, all of that, all of that uh, is going to premiere that film with the filmmakers who are going to be in town in a four hour special transmission uh, coming up Wednesday, the 17th of July uh, in just a few weeks. I mean, that's the type of stuff that goes on at prisonplanet.tv. And it's awesome because We've had 300 plus thousand people tune into PrisonPlanet.tv in one day and watch the show when it's election coverage or 100,000 tune in when it's Bilderberg coverage because people are sharing those passcodes. That's Operation Awaking the Sleeping Giant. So if you currently have a membership, share it. And if you don't have a membership or were a member in the past, we've just upgraded it, made it better and better. Please become a member. And I want to thank all of the PrisonPlanet.tv members for being part of PrisonPlanet.tv. Because between that and InfoWarsHealth.com and the incredible products and the films, the t-shirts, the books, the advertising, that's how we have been able to build the largest multi-platform alternative media system in the world. And shows like Coast to Coast with George Norrie have helped us. People like Matt Drudge of DrudgeReport.com have helped us. We've all got to hang together. That's why when they went after Rush Limbaugh, last year uh, and we're trying to get him kicked off the air going after his sponsors twisting what he said and did 
Even though I don't agree with everything Rush says, even though Rush has criticized me before, it didn't matter. If they can take him down, folks, they can take down talk radio. Because it's long form. It's not talking points. Radio's not getting talking points, ladies and gentlemen. It's really what people are into. It's what you call in with. The, the globalists can't control it. Look, look, top shows on TV have 3 million viewers. George Norrie has 16 million a week. We have all together, one way or another, 15 million people that tune in one way or another. On radio, it's about 6, 7 million a week on actual terrestrial radio. 15 million now a week, one way or another. That's very conservative, by the way. Count YouTube, everything. That's what scares the system. And, and think about it. We are the biggest media. It's just we're not all fancy pants, and we don't have all the money of, you know, 500 million a year or something to run MSNBC. You know, we're running this whole operation on $7 million a year. And the media is like, ooh, look at all the money Alex makes. I'm spending 100 plus percent right now to finish all this and try to launch. I'm spending our reserves right now, right now, $7 million a year, folks. And I'm actually glad I'm spending all the money that's coming in. Okay? I mean, because I'm doing this with what you support us with. This is expensive. My bandwidth is now $650,000 a year. We just checked the last 12 months' numbers. IT is on top of that. It is expensive to be doing this. It's expensive to have a free video feed for the daytime viewers at Infowars.com forward slash show. But we've gotten sponsors to pay for most of it. So support our sponsors. Now, I want to get into a bunch of issues and take calls all over the map with George Norrie, Paul, Joshua, Joseph, David, Karen. Uh, Paul's been holding the longest along with Joseph. We're going to get to you. George Norrie's our guest here. But George has expanded. He's doing a very popular TV show at GeorgeNorrieLive.com. He's doing speaking engagements all over the place. And it's important to support what George is doing as well. And I'm going to be on with him. Uh, and it's being sponsored by AM640 uh, up in Canada. And I want uh, George to tell everybody about this very exciting event that is close to selling out in this giant theater and the people that are going to be there. You've got George and two other physical guests. They probably won't let me into Canada. They barely did last time. That's why I'm not going to be there. But I'll be there via Skype uh, as well to kick it off. George, tell us about this uh, historic event uh, that's coming up uh, in Toronto, uh, Ontario, Canada. Oh, that's going to be exciting, Alex. Uh, this uh, coming Saturday, I'll be in Toronto at the Queen Elizabeth Theater doing a major event with a little entertainment, which I'll explain in a second. But David Hatcher Childress will be with us talking about ancient mysteries, Richard Dolan talking about the UFO disclosure, and of course you'll be joining us live, as you just said, via Skype on a huge screen before a packed house. They've still got some tickets available, and if anybody's interested in the greater Toronto, New York area, just go to George Norrie Live dot com n o o r y george norrie live dot com and come on by and see us and uh, my mother is coming up from Detroit according to my sister wow she's never seen me in a live event and she's all excited and part of the caveat I I'm going to be singing some songs there you know, oh my I do gosh that part time for fun you know we all have our own little hobbies. And so I'm going to turn it into an entertainment venue as well. So it's about a three-hour event, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Toronto's a great city, and I've got to tell you, Alex, our Canadian brothers and sisters just admire what we as Americans do. And, uh, you know, they're in the trenches with us. They were in World War II, and they still are now. Well, I know your events are amazing. I've been to a few of them to overflow crowds here in Austin. And I want to thank you for inviting me up there. And thank you for letting me just be part of it uh, via Skype. Tell me about uh, some of the other guests that are going to be there. Well, David Hatcher Childress, of course, the expert in ancient mysteries. So he's going to be on with me just talking about some of the great mysteries and the bizarre things that have happened on this planet for years. Richard Dolan is an expert on government secrecy. And, of course, he specializes in the UFO search. And then we've got Alex Jones, who's going to talk with us about NSA and about world rights and everything else. And that's going to be, that's going to be fun. You're going to have an audience of maybe 900 to 1,000 people watching you on this big screen. And I'll be standing up next to it talking to you via Skype. Absolutely. And I'm going to be there via Skype. Next time you're on, George, I want you to get on Skype as well. 
And uh, also, you may be on Coast to Coast tonight for a couple hours, the first couple hours, right? Absolutely. You just invited me during the break. Yes, sir. I'd love to come on and talk about all these issues. Okay, we'll do that. Fantastic. No rest for the... I don't feel too wicked, though. It's no rest for liberty lovers. No rest at all. We don't stop. <laughs> you know, uh, last Friday, right before Saturday, I had put in 20 straight days in a, in a row in work. And you know what? I'm not tired. I'm energetic. I keep going. When it's all said and done, I would have put in 40 days out of 42. Um, but, you know, we have to do that now, Alex. We don't stop, do we? Well, I'm only exhausted when I'm not working. And, and I think my dad says, well, that's what happens when you're burnt out, son. you, know, you, you got to keep working because if you stop, uh, I guess they almost call that post-traumatic where you've done, you, know, you, you work so hard. Uh, I know a lot of doctors have that where then when they finally try to relax, it's like you're exhausted. I, I think that's what's going on, George. Yeah, I, I think so, too. When you stop, that's when you pass out. So you got to <laughs> just keep going like the Ever Ready Bunny and the Energizer and just keep going. You know, there's so many stories. Uh, promise me you'll come on in, in a month or so for an hour to talk about George Norrie because you never really talk about yourself. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I knew Jimmy Hoffa. You've got so many interesting stories I hear when you tell them occasionally, but not often enough about your decades as being a top TV investigative journalist. Uh, just really interesting stuff. What, what's the craziest thing that you ever saw or witnessed as a, a TV news journalist? Oh, I've done some things uh, that I can't mention on the air, but... <laughs> There have been a lot of strange things that have happened over the years, Alex. I mean, uh, whether they were calls into coast to coast. I remember a lady who called me one day and said, George, you're not going to believe this. My husband, who never comes home late, was abducted by aliens. And I said, oh, my God, is he okay? She said, yeah, he came home nervous and sweaty and shaking. And, uh, and I said, so he told you he got abducted? And, and she said, yeah. And uh, I said, well, what else happened? She said, these aliens, do you know what they did to him? And I'm going, oh, my God, probes, what? And she said, they took his wedding ring off. And so the poor guy spent the night out, right, probably playing around, forgot to put his ring on. Said aliens did it. And aliens did it. And, uh, <laughs> she fell for it. So, I mean, we get all kinds on Coast to Coast. And, you know, in my, in my TV arena, you know, I was generally a pretty hard news guy. You know, I covered things. Um, you know, six people murdered in Detroit. Uh, you know, I was there at the drug house while they were carting these people out. Um, you know, I, I mentioned Jimmy Hoffa. So, you know, I, I, I interviewed George McGovern during the presidential race. I mean, I go way, way back. Absolutely, George. You have seen a lot. Uh, we're going to go to some phone calls here in a little while. They're, they're all over the map. We have Karen who says she's a retired NSA worker. Paul wants to talk about uh, current events, uh, chemicals and rivers in the environment, Joshua. Uh, Joseph wants to talk about government harassment. David wants to talk about Man of Steel movie. Hey, have you seen the Man of Steel movie, George? No, I have not. I have not. Normally what I do, Alex, is I wait till these things come out on the DVD, and then I watch them in the comforts of the house. I hear you. I, I'm not a big fan of... Um, of the kind of comic book genre, but I thought it really had a wholesome anti-New World Order, anti-authoritarianism, anti-eugenics message. And, and I'm seeing more and more positive stuff out of Hollywood. People actually say, what are you getting paid to promote these movies? No, when I see something positive, I want to give it attention instead of just only covering the negative. Like the Supreme Court, I think, ruled right that the, the, the companies can't patent your genes and then not let anybody else do research on it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, some things the court does do some things that are right, and sometimes they do some things that aren't. I haven't had time to analyze the ruling yet, but what do you think of the Supreme Court uh, striking down key provisions of the Voting Rights Act today? Well, that's an interesting situation. You know, the Voting Rights Act, which was passed during the Civil Rights era, um, you know, tried to protect states and things like that. I have not jumped into it as well, so I can't say if it's a good or bad thing, but it's interesting that some 40 years later, they, they jump on board to, to, to change it. That, I, I, I wonder why. Plus, it's kind of schizophrenic. Yeah, they said a week ago, uh, oh, Arizona can't demand IDs to, to vote. And then now they say, you know, that uh, they're not going to have the feds harassing the states. It's, it's just bizarre. I'd, I'd like to see the right to not have an electronic voting machine proven to be a fraud. Uh, I'd like to see a right to go back to paper ballots. Well, I would too. You know, Beth Harris, uh, Black Box Voting, she
he has been a proponent, a staunch proponent against these electronic voting machines. And I mean, there's no question if the NSA has the ability to tap into everything we do electronically, who's to say that they one day can't, you know, rig an election? And even though a lot of us suspect some hanky panky has gone on, um, that they just simply change everything, you know, and everything's going through these various companies. I think there's a company in Spain that owns, you know, a, a pretty sizable electronic voting that company here in the United States. It was a Tampa-based company that they bought. Oh, out. yeah, back when um, Senator Hagel first got in, I didn't believe it when the news, when it said that he owned 91% of the company that almost all votes were counted on, and then it was confirmed. And it's like, oh, what's wrong with having me owning the company you vote on that's designed where people can go in and change the vote? I mean, it is just insane to see this going on. I want to bring up Hastings again and then go to these phone calls, George, and bring up any other important breaking news that you think is important. But I wanted to play the clip of him on the Young Turks. Uh, I think it was Sink Urix, how you pronounce it. He's been on this show. Interesting guy. One of the better liberals out there, in my view. A week before his car blows up or runs into a tree or whatever, and he says, I'm on the run, they're after me, I'm going to break the big story, and then boom, two hours later, this is what he said about the press lining up together for freedom in this country. And I agree, and I haven't heard a lot of media talk like this. I've heard you talk like this. I, I've talked like this. That's why I really salute people that do have the courage to do this. And, and, and I think the press should investigate what happened to Hastings. Here's that clip. We'll get George's take on it. Obama administration has clearly declared war on, on the press. It's declared war on uh, investigative journalists, our sources. I think the only recourse to this kind of behavior by the government is to say back to the government, we declare war on you, and from this point forward, we should no longer, as, as a media, as a whole, cooperate in any manner uh, with, with, with the government in terms of when we're doing national security stories. We should withdraw all, all our cooperation and we should publish everything we know because it's a free press and it's not a free except for when the government tells me to do it press. And we've been, we've been way, too, way too easy going with these guys. We've let them get away with this for years. We've let them tell us what to print, what not to print. And I say, I say be done with it and everybody should just get together and, and, and fire back because no one else is going to defend the press. That's right. No one else is going to... Defend the press, and that's what America's based on. We always group about Russia and China and Mexico persecuting the press like this. I mean, this should get this should really wake everybody up and get the lapdog media to stop groveling. Instead, I've been seeing numbers that they're saying there's even more groveling by the press, and David Gregory saying arrest the press. That guy's not the press. He should be out of there right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for a journalist to say that is crazy, and. Uh you know, he, he should be relieved of his duties. He really should. Well, I mean, the press should drum him out. I mean, if he goes to a, the National Press Club, everybody should turn their back and not talk to him. I mean, really, until he apologizes. Oh, even an apology is, is, is stupid. I mean, here's one thing about an apology, Alex. You know, somebody does something stupid or horrendous, and then they come out and say, well, I apologize. They're only apologizing because the heat's on them. Whatever they did is still in their system. David Gregory is not going to stop feeling the way he feels. Yeah, I, I mean, who is he, a stooge for the government? I mean, un unbelievable. I mean, as a journalist, to attack another journalist for investigative reporting and for releasing a story that affects so many people worldwide and then chastising the guy is abominable. I'm glad you see it that way because that's exactly how I see it as a, as a media person who has a, wears a small journalist hat. You wear a big journalist hat in your earlier incarnations, but more of an analyst now, I would say. I mean, all of us are analysts. And it's just outrageous that we've seen bipartisan members of Congress talk like this. Um, these guys are out of control, and, and, and the press needs to understand something. If we all start standing up, they can't stop us all. But if we let them pick us all off one at a one, the, our children have no future. George Norrie's our guest. Uh, they, they will sell out. The tickets, uh, I'm told, are very close to selling out. You can go to the website uh, that we'll give you after the break uh, and get tickets to his big Toronto event, GeorgeNorrieLive.com. GeorgeNorrieLive.com. 4 p.m. box office opens. 5 p.m. doors open. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.
I'll tell you, it's awesome having George Norrie on with us. I, I just, I got to say it, I admire people that have courage. And the direction that George Norrie took Coast to Coast AM has just been phenomenal. Uh, we take for granted 11 years later that so much of this stuff's out in the open. He is a trailblazer. Coast to Coast AM dot com. And some people can say, oh, well, they get into some wild stuff. I don't want to. They get people thinking. And that's a healthy thing, ladies and gentlemen. And George, you know, has people like me on there to uh, unvarnish to say whatever I want, breaking it down because George knows I'll have facts and documents behind what I'm saying. So very, very important. Be sure and go to his event, GeorgeNorrieLive.com in Toronto. This Saturday, 6 p.m. event begins and runs uh, past 9. I want to go right to phone calls. Karen in Arizona uh, says she spoke with a retired NSA worker, to be clear. Uh, and Karen, what did this NSA worker tell you? You're on the air with George Norrie. Well, I, ma I mentioned to him, and thank you for, uh, for t allowing me to talk to you and George. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'm, uh, as a town hall meeting, before it started, I was talking to this gentleman, and I said, I'm glad Snowden came out and uh, admitted that they were spy NSA was spying on American people. And uh, this guy says, he says, I worked for NSA for 30 years, and I retired from the NSA. We never spied, did domestic spying. And I says, well, according to Russell Tice, I said, he w I says, you know Russell Tice? He said, yes. I says, he did terrestrial, and he said, yes, they did. And I said, well, ma'am, 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 listen, I'm going to get George's take on this, but it's on record. Everything goes through the NSA. It's on record. He may have been compartmentalized where they were doing foreign intelligence because large portions of it are that. Uh, it, because it's all very compartmentalized. They don't know what's going on next door to them. Or it may not have been an NSA person either. So, for someone to say now, we never spied domestically, is like saying the sun didn't come up this morning. George Norrie. Well, probably during his era two as well, Alex, they probably didn't have the technical capability to spy on all of us like they do now. So he might have been right telling her, hey, we didn't do that because they didn't have the ability to do it. Now they do. And they're using it like crazy. Absolutely. Thank you for the call, ma'am. I mean, just look, just because somebody says they're with the CIA or the NSA does not mean they are. Okay, most people that actually have been in it are not going to tell you. Um, let's go to a call from Joshua. Joshua, you're on the air with George Norrie. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. Hey, Hello, buddy. George Norrie. Hey, Josh. Uh, it was, it's great to be on the air with you guys. Um, yeah, I, I love both your shows. Thank you. Uh, you Thank you both for waking me up. And what I was going to talk about was I seen on the InfoWars Nightly News about Fort McClellan and Monsanto, which I live very close to here. And the, the DU there that was used on Fort McClellan and people not knowing about it. Uh, Monsanto is really just right down the road from it. Oh, yeah, the uh, dioxin, the dioxin, they were involved in that. They, they, they incinerated a lot of chemical weapons there, uh, too. One mile from the incinerator. Yeah. One mile. But, yeah, the... Do um, you have a question Monsanto for George, did... brother? Yes, sir. George, what do you think about uh, all these rivers and streams and everything being poisoned? And they can't do nothing about it. They didn't even find out about it until like the early 90s. People knew they were doing it, but it wasn't covered by the press. Good question, George. Take us out to break. You're doing five more minutes graciously. What's your take on the fact that they go after environmental stuff that isn't bad, but then ignore all the real stuff? I know, and they should be looking at the real stuff. The hard dumping by corporations and all this other junk. Um, you know, they, I, look, uh, don't get me started on fluoride either, because you talk about poison in the water system. That's it. And we've got to get it out of our water. I mean, all these Harvard studies, you name it, and it's still in there. Viewers have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the Info War. George Nori, host to Coast to Coast AM.com. George Nori Live.com to find out about his live events, not just the one in Canada this Saturday that I'll be part of. 
And then, of course, everywhere I go, I see people talking about the, your show, Beyond Belief. Uh, and I see the ads all over the place, George. That must be pretty successful. Well, that's a great little show we're doing. Uh, it's uh, something I tape once a month for shows, Alex. Love to get you up there as a guest. We tape in Denver. And they air it. It's an Internet-based show. The company is called Gaim TV. And uh, they just wanted to get into television in a big way. And it's like Netflix. They charge a nominal monthly fee. But they also have access to thousands of self-help videos. They bought uh, Vivendi from Universal. And uh, they provide all that. I mean, so for a little fee every month, I mean, you can hey, do everything. You, you tell me when, uh, and I'll uh, set it up with Tom, the great producer of that show, and Coast, of course, along with Lisa Lyon. And I would love to come um, anytime you'd like. I love Denver. Uh, let's if anybody wants info on the TV show, just go to our website, coasttocoastam.com. You click hosts at the top, and then it just uh, opens up. The TV icon is there. We've got it on screen for viewers as well. Uh, let's real quick, Paul in Florida, then we'll go to Joseph. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Quick question for George. Yeah, hey, Alex. Uh, first time caller. Uh, I, I just wanted to thank you, sir, for waking me up. I know you don't like to hear it. Um, and as far as George, um, I'd like to articulate on the first part of the segment when you talked about how the New World Order has uh, kind of rushed things and, and put everything, the whole plan into perspective and, and kind of rushing it in now because it's almost like they are sort of bleeding out. The more we wake up, the more people we wake up, um, uh, it seems like, you know, they are rushing things with AI. And I, I'm trying to figure out, because I have kids, and so forth. It's like I'm trying to figure out how fast it's going to be before they implement, you know, the AI robotics. You know, Google's coming out with its own glasses. They're trying to get this takeover in as fast as they can, and it's so criminal. I mean, now what's in the news like, is it good that your, your, your smart TV's watching you? Not, oh, my God, it's 1984. It's like, oh, all the crazies were right. But, again, I guess we end the, the interview, George, as we started it. This is crazy. We're at the crossroads. They are panicking, Alex, and part of the problem with this, when we talk about the New World Order, you were in the United Kingdom at the Bilderbergs uh, just a few weeks ago. These are groups of people, and, and people say, who are these people? Well, it, it's obvious. They're people who have so much wealth. I mean, you know, just today they just revealed a report that 70% of the Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. These people never got paychecks. This is family money handed down over the eons. And they've got so much wealth. I'm talking billions of dollars. They're playing God. They're, they're bored. They're bored. So what they do is they do the next thing. And, you know, believe me, if you watch Eyes Wide Shut, the uh, Stanley Kubrick movie, you'll see some of the things that they do. That's what they really do. That's what so they do. They're bored. Yeah. But this is a game for them. This is world domination. And they're having a great time doing it. You know, I'm sure they've got offices to go to, and they sit back and they go, how can we scheme to do this or well, do that? I mean, it came out that Bill and Melinda Gates met with all the world leaders secretly again in the U.S. two weeks before Bilderberg to reduce world population. And then he's the guy going, by the way, I have a shot for you. I want you to die, but I want to reduce population. I mean, it's so incredibly obvious and we've just got to wake up to it, and that's happening. George, I will see you, what, in the first two hours of Coast tonight? I'll see you at midnight central time tonight on Coast to Coast. Coasttocoastam.com for station listings in your area, like 590 here in Austin, Texas. George, thank you for being a trailblazer and standing up for my family and your family and free humanity. We salute you. All right, my friend. Be well. All right, there goes George Nori. Uh, adios to him. Visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.